Okay, so when you're ready, you can open your eyes and come back into the Zoom screen. So if you'd like to talk, you can just wave your hand. Somebody would like to share what happened in the meditation. So maybe I ask Hannah to share as her sister's on the screen tonight. Welcome, Cora. <laughs> um, yeah. So what was happening was a lot of stillness was there and then something more opening even after the stillness um, and as soon as thoughts were coming it was like this inside of me is taking me back <laughs> um, back to this I don't I, I don't have words <laughs> but to this openness right. or um, right. Right. So I didn't even have to ask myself this, who am I? It just happened or coming back. <laughs> right. right. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. So shall I ask your sister to, would you like to say hello, Corey? And that way I get to know you. You can say a few words, I'll have you on the screen. Can you hear me? Ah, okay, now we now I see you. Yeah. Okay. Welcome to the Open Sky House. Thank ah. you. You've come for the weekend, I think. Yes, I was going for a weekend. And I already okay. feel very welcome. Actually, Om, I have a sound problem if you can come and help me. Okay, go ahead. What did you experience in the meditation? Um, so first, uh, yeah, I also said to the computer. But maybe my microphone is also not the best. So my mic, my microphone is not the best usually. Okay, I can hear you. It's, I think it's all right if you carry on. Okay, maybe I, I just have to come closer. <laughs> so um yeah so for me at first i felt my breathing i think that was very present um and but in different body part like first more on the stomach and then more on my nose second time and then when you said like to look deeper like let yourself fall deeper inside um I I kind of had something like just more blank, like a black darkness somehow coming. Okay. So I think we're gonna we're gonna have to meet tomorrow because I don't really hear you tonight. Okay. Perfect. But anyway, it's nice to see you're here. Welcome. <laughs> yes. Okay, so maybe one more person would like to share. How about you, Lisa? You were here last last whole of last week. I think you were here. Nice to see you tonight. Yeah, thanks for inviting me here. Um, I'm very pleased to be here, and um, well, I felt quite a big laugh inside of me and I felt that I was breathing heavily <laughs> during the meditation. So I'm um, still a bit touched. Or I, I try to um, keep in contact with the emotions I had during the week in the open sky house. So I try to manage, but I think actually it works <laughs> even at home. Um, can you answer the front door of the house? Somebody's ringing the bell. So um, we've probably got a guest busy coming to stay tonight. So. And how has it been this week? You you were here until about Monday, I think, and then you've had a few days in Cologne. And how has that been for you? Um, I, I visited my family 
so I wasn't really at home, but um, there it was quite, it, it was um, astonishing because I continued to quit my, uh, my, day, my appointments and just do what just happens. So I was at a concert, so um, just by chance, <laughs> um, it was a nice um, experience to like be more flexible um, after getting to what I think is more like me or myself. Right, right, right. A little bit mis mystery happened, yeah. Bit of mystery, yes. bit of magic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah. Yeah, it's always an interesting sign when when it seems as if existence is giving you exactly the right things at the right time. And um, we can be rather surprised about that, but also we can get very nicely used to that because our life starts to change then because you see the possibility of really trusting existence. And then that means that you can let go of the personal because you can trust the much greater power. So it sounds like you had a good week. Yeah. yeah. I did. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Okay. So maybe one more person. Somebody from Spain, maybe? Krishna, Bali, Kashi, who would like to share? Maybe Kali, would you like to share? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Um, I felt a little tired this time um, while the meditation and um, I could allow it and then it went it was somehow um, a silent tiredness or something. Um, so there was not many thoughts and I felt like there was a warm space around me. Um, yeah. Okay. And how is how is it down in Spain? It's probably a warm space around you all day. Actually, in the last days, it got cold again, like a little bit windy and the sun is not always there, but it's still kind of warm but not as last week so um in the evening right now it's it's kind of cold actually uh, a little bit windy okay yeah but still you have the sun in between so right. probably nicer than in germany okay 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 good good Okay, so tonight I'm going to um, use use this book. It's called The Pointless Joy of Freedom. And in this book, there are seven chapters. And tonight we've got as far as the fourth chapter. And the fourth chapter, of course, is the heart chakra. Um, so this is an interesting uh, energy center because there are three energy centers below and three energy centers above. So it's a kind of change point between the, um, if you like, the more basic energy centers and a kind of opening up to our true nature. So this is uh, chapter four, and this is about perseverance. When you have a deep understanding that the identification with the ego is to be given up, then perseverance is crucial. Every spiritual seeker will come to 
moment where they can easily sabotage themselves and just fall back into the known. So this is uh, something that we constantly experience here in our community. And I call this the ego wall. So, of course, the um, as we get deeper and deeper into the inner inner world, we come to understand that we need to deal with various mind structures that are not so easy to deal with, that are in the background from the early days. And we've been conditioned with those structures. So they happen to us uh, invisibly mostly. And um, they stay somehow in the mind and they keep on influencing what's happening to us day by day. So at a certain point, we find that stronger things come up. Anyway, we find this in our community, that um, many people in the community are finding after some time, they come to some aspect uh, inside themselves, which is very uncomfortable, maybe a bit threatening. And it's very easy when this particular structures having to be dealt with that we want to run away. So I call this moment the ego wall. And um, it's something that is almost inevitably going to happen to everybody who is seriously wanting to become free. So this is not really the moment to run away. Because if you run away, you still got the structure inside you. So you don't gain anything by running away, but you can gain a lot by, by staying with that particular issue. And if you stay with the issue, it may be uncomfortable. Sometimes it can be emotionally painful. Nevertheless, then there's a great value in staying with it because there's a chance it will disappear. So, so this is something where perseverance is needed because over the 20 odd years of Open Sky House, we've had many people who've come here very happily, have lived here very happily for some time, and they've been dealing with their inner structures uh, out of the daily goings on in the community, working together, being together, meditating together, and then um, it's very obvious that something has happened um, and you can feel how this person starts to kind of withdraw themselves. We have one or two people in the community right now who have, have this situation. So maybe later I talk with Shiva, Atma and Nataraj because each, each of you in different ways with different kinds of structures are approaching something inside you which is not so easy for you to deal with. And I don't know uh, whether you thought about uh, going away, but it's quite possible uh, because we've had many very good people, people who had made a lot of progress here and who I could feel are sincerely uh, on the track of coming to their true nature, but then they go into some kind of resistance and um, kind of close down and um, withdraw themselves from, from me and withdraw themselves from the people in the community, and then they leave. So we had many good people like that, and this is one of the things that makes me come to a lot of sad feelings because I know that when they leave, the community of um, loving energy field, the, the, the loving energy field that's available here in the community, which can support this kind of inner looking, will not be there probably. 
And so it makes it even more difficult to deal with those issues. And although I don't keep in contact with everybody who leaves the community, my sense is that for many people, they never come back to that particular issue. And therefore, it's a huge sabotage. Okay, so maybe somebody would like to comment about what I was just saying. And then we look at three, three, three of the chapters from this uh, chapter. Anybody like to comment? Okay, Shiva. No. So she lived in the community about 12 years, you know? 11, yeah. 11. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, recently, there was some moments where it was quite strong, yes. And um, I must say there were some, yeah, where the, some meetings were felt kind of, um, how to say, um, confronting. And um, as you said, then, yeah, thoughts came up. Uh, is it the right place still? And um, yeah, I could see these thoughts. There for some days they were there. But I also know, I mean, I'm long here and I saw many people leaving that this is uh, not good. So and in the end, I got help and um, had some sessions outside also. And um, I have the feeling something is moving, but it's slow. I mean, I see it takes some time and um, I can't say if this ego wall is coming or not or difficult moment. Yeah, I mean, there was a moment uh, some weeks ago where I can say it's not so easy in that moment to really see this, yeah, this uh, resistance and uh, how the mind really wants to, yeah, go around this topic. Right, right. But I think, you know, you're not, right now, you're not in danger of the ego war because what you've just been saying shows that you're being able to look and you understand yourself in the situation where other people you've seen probably quite a few people leave yes um, we have norwegian friend rajen he was um seemingly you know heading for his own essence and um, then suddenly when we were in india it was easier when we when john david's not in the house and he 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 left mm. and it was so clear that he was running away from an issue he has, which was uh, something that was clearly coming to him from his early childhood in his family. And we had talked about it, he talked about it, but somehow in the end it was uh, too strong for him. And um, yeah, and then he just left. And uh, this was very sad, one of the many times I feel sadness in my heart because mm. he has many he had many good good qualities, and um he didn't make the right choice. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I see this also, but I mean, in that moment when you are when the mind is strong, um I can understand, and you can't see it, yeah, right, right. This is, um the problem i would say but i mean um still uh, there's lots of support here and right right take it otherwise i mean it's a pity yeah right so perseverance, right, I... hmm? perseverance you know i i also in my younger days on the inner path i also had moments where it got very difficult and I don't know if I was ever ready to give up, but it was certainly, um, there were diff difficult times in my journey. There will be all kinds of situations that you would like to run away from. And the most common way to run away is through relationship. We fall in love, fall in love, yeah? Fall in love. It is important to see that you are already loved and that your effort to get it from the outside can very easily sabotage your awakening. 
So this is a very sort of unpopular un kind of message. And it's a message that, you know, with people who live in our community, after many years, many kinds of relationships in the community, we've now come to a, to a point where all the people who live here, uh, well, let's not say all, but most of the people who live in the house, they now understand that there's a difference between their own essence, which is love, and this relationship with love, where we say, I fall in love with you. So I'm falling in love, not rising in love, but falling in love. And this is one of, one of the, I would say, largest sabotages that I notice happening with people who want to become free and sincerely have the chance to become free. And when it gets um, maybe a bit difficult, maybe not as far as the ego war, but at least um, it seems nothing is changing, feel a bit stuck, and so on and so on, then we reach out for somebody. We reach out to somebody and we, we have a, a love affair. And uh, uh, we were mentioning Rajan from Norway. He, he uh, was very busy with this. He kept it secret, but it was going on behind, behind um, over many years, actually. He, he was always looking, although he seemed to be so sincerely um, with himself, but actually very often he was escaping into some kind of love relationship. And there's nothing wrong with sharing love with somebody, but when you're looking to somebody to give you love because you don't have the awareness of your own love, this is, of course, a bit sad and doesn't really give you a good result. So we're going to talk about this tonight um, uh, because this is, uh, of course, the fifth chakra. It's the heart chakra. So it's it's right now when we get to this, this kind of inflection point between the three lower chakras, you can imagine an inverted triangle and the three... Uh, chakras that take us up to our awakening. So this is a particular point, and um, I'm going to I'm going to read something from the first chapter, which is called "Hiding in Non-Duality." This is a kind of interesting chapter, and the quotation that I was using in this chapter is from Paul Lowe. And uh, if you look in the um, pages of autobiographies, you'll find that he was one of the closest disciples to Osho. So I remember when I came to the ashram, uh, he's English, and he was, there was quite a few English close to Osho, and he was the most outstanding guy. He used to sit in the first row of the meeting right in front of Osho, and later when Osho was um, getting older, he was the guy who used to give sannyas. So he, he had this special special situation in the ashram. He lived in the house with Osho. He was a very lovely man. I found him very inspiring, and I had some nice meetings with him along the way. So Paul Lowe is making this comment. We don't want to see the way it is. We want to see it the way we want to see it, the way we want it to be. So when we keep looking for the way we want it to be, we don't see the way it is. And this is also a little bit common among spiritual people who haven't really uh, given enough energy to the inner looking at their own particular, um, how can I say, the, the particular way that their their mind is working, and in a way fall back into uh, how they want it to be, how they want it to be, not how it actually is. So this is a kind of interesting quotation, and he's he's making the point that very often 
people involved in non-duality go to a couple of meetings and they say to themselves, now I understand. I am not who I thought I was. I'm not somebody. I'm not a person. I am nothing. Oh, great. So I don't have to do anything because I'm nothing. So I don't think this is particularly Shiva. It's not particularly your uh, issue. I don't. I don't see that's really your issue, but it's it's mm -hmm. quite a common issue that um, people who maybe feel themselves quite advanced, they've been doing inner work maybe for many years, um, they can they can be existing on the idea there's nothing to do, nothing to do. I'm not a somebody. There's nothing to do. And this can be a cop-out. It's not wrong when you say, okay, I'm nothing. That's not wrong. There's nothing wrong in that because that is maybe a better understanding than thinking you are a somebody. But it's not the whole truth either because the old structures are still working inside us. Even if we're going around saying, I am nothing, I am nothing, when you start to see that these mechanisms are still working, then you've come to the point now where you need to investigate. We can call it inner work. So um, when I was traveling in, in Europe from place to place, I'm giving meetings, I never really engaged so deeply with people because perhaps I was only there for a few evenings. But now, since 20 years, I stopped traveling. Most of the time, I don't travel so much, occasionally. But um, gradually, this community um, developed and gradually has attracted very sincere people, people who uh, want to look and want to deal with whatever they have to deal with. And Shiva, I would say you're definitely one of these people. Then um, it becomes the, the work, the main work of our community to look, to do the inner work. On the outside, we're still cooking lunch. We're still clearing up lunch after we've eaten lunch. We're still doing all the regular daily tasks that we need to do. But the real work, when we're cleaning something, when we're washing the dishes, when we're cooking the lunch, the real work is the inner work. And uh, over the 20, 22 years of this community, We've now, in the last years, reached a very lovely situation where everybody, I would say everybody, is sincerely wanting to go on this inner journey and who are sincerely looking at what they need to look at. And this is very, very beautiful because the product of that looking is very sincere people who have tremendous heart energy. And so when, when you visit our community, um, we've got some people maybe who haven't been here, I'm not quite sure. Um, so you'll find that you immediately step into a certain energy field. And this energy field is um, very powerful to support this inner looking because everybody, everybody is interested in that together. And so naturally, without even realizing it, we support each other. And so in this community, we have you know, regular drama every day, I would say, for since 22 years, pretty much every day, every day, some drama with somebody who is getting in touch with some aspects which they're not very comfortable with perhaps you see but this is completely wonderful as long as you remember this perseverance you don't give up but you 
take whatever it is aboard and you do what is necessary, you do the looking that is necessary, and you find that somehow in a magic way, things disappear. It becomes lighter. And um, yeah, it, it's actually very touching for a teacher to experience this. And I think only with a community where people are invested to do this work together, can it really go easily? I never planned to have a community around and uh, it happened when I came back to Europe from being um, overseas, being in, I was actually living in Australia, came back to Europe and uh, in a magic way, I found myself heading to be in a community. So that was 22 years ago. Okay, so anybody like to share about that? Just wave your hand. Okay. Can I speak from David? Can I? Can I speak, John David? Yeah. Uh, can I speak? Sure. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The whole time, I I think you you uh, talk only to me. I'm very much um, impressed and um, uh, and touched because uh, it's a time. Uh, when I feel so much old issues to look at. Right, right. Yeah. And on top, the uh, lasting hip pain. <laughs> and, this, and this mixture is really not nice. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm only yeah. laughing because, it, I mean, I, I understand everything you're saying. I'm, of mm -hmm. course observing this on a daily basis but mm -hmm. although it's a tough situation you see you're you're revealing the fact that you're exactly in these two things you know the ego wall is sort of around made made more difficult by your hip issue you had a new hip joint but you still get regular pain as i understand so mm -hmm. that's of course not so nice if it helps you at all you, I can tell you that I've also had a hip operation, both my hips, a few years ago. And generally, I get no pain at all. So that's very nice. But starting last night and still going on now, I have intense pain in my right leg. Maybe that makes you feel a bit better. I don't know. <laughs> I feel with you. What? I feel with you. <laughs> yes, yes. But the thing, yeah. the thing we have to remember is mm -hmm. if you really accept life as it's coming to you, right, as mm -hmm. you've got the trust, then there's some reason why at the same time as the pain, you're also dealing with some stronger structures you have. Yeah. And actually, I know you, you, you're a little bit of wanting to escape, you know. Mm -hmm. So we now, just in the last days, we were planning the trip to Spain. We have a retreat in Spain uh, in about two weeks' time. And uh, you you were on the list. We bought you an air ticket to come there. And then you told us, well, I have so much pain. Um, I want to stay and do some uh, some healing on my, my hip. Yeah? So you weren't going to come, you see. And maybe you didn't notice, but I could feel that that wasn't really the best thing for you because mm. moving to another culture, moving to another weather, because it's mainly sunny in Spain, even if it wasn't tonight. And um, also I knew that when Pavati was in Spain, she 
found a very good acupuncturist, which helped her a lot over some months. Mm, I heard about regular regular sessions. And so I felt uh, that that would be definitely worth a try for you too. In in the past, I've had acupuncture. Um, actually, I had it in China even one time. I was visiting China. I became the, the patient in front of a group of about 50 tourists when they stuck needles into me. That was my first ever experience of acupuncture. And then living in Japan, I also had acupuncture. And I've had it in other places. You know? So I know oh. that acupuncture can be wonderful for pain because mm. it opens up the energy channels inside the body. And that can be how you can easily, re re how can I say, uh, release this pain. Because somehow on, on one level, the pain is something that's blocking. It's blocking. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Totally yeah. blocking. And one of the things that you may have got in touch with recently, but if you haven't, I give you a little, um, a little, uh, how can I say, a little um, uh, reminder right now. And that is that within the community, you've taken a position where because you're a bit older, you're not as old as me, of course, and you're not that old, but we can see you with white hair and you, you feel this age. And of course, we have quite a few uh, young, young guys and girls in the community. And sometimes this makes you a bit remote, a bit remote. So people sometimes feel you with, with a sort of protection around, mm -hmm. like an isolation around you. Mm -hmm. And this is definitely not needed because when you first came to the community some three years ago, was it maybe? Not uh, not quite uh, two years. Two years ago. Okay. So two years ago, you were having some very wonderful opening experiences. And you were very, very happy to come and live in the community. And in the beginning, it was rather easy for you. And you mm. had this sense of, um, of being extremely open, actually. You were extremely open. Mm. But now, after two years... Um, when you might be expecting it to be even easier, suddenly it's not mm. easier. Yeah. And so um, this is a kind of situation where this chapter, which you can read later, this mm -hmm. chapter on perseverance is very important. And I think uh, by the end of this evening, you'll get a sense of that, how important mm -hmm. it is. And looming is this kind of uh, situation I call the ego war, where it all gets too difficult, and the easiest thing then is to is to go away from it, you know. But unfortunately, when we go away from it, uh, it's not so easy to come back to it. So uh, please don't do that. Mm. So, mm. so now I have a quotation here from our famous uh, Ramana Mahashi. And he says, no one succeeds without effort. Those who succeed owe their success to perseverance. Okay, so this is this is a quote from our famous, most popular and famous uh, teacher. And um, I know that uh, you you trust what he says. So when he is saying this, then it gives it an extra kind of power, yeah? this idea of keeping going, not giving up, perseverance. And he says, uh, perseverance means that you have a deep knowing that there is something to give up, the identification with the ego. To persevere means to keep going. And of course, this is not always going to be easy. The longer you do the inner work, the more will get stirred up inside you. And in a way, you could say, the more difficult it gets. We all have our ideas about how things should be and how everything should be wonderfully easy and such things. It's not like that. You have to persevere. 
Otherwise, what could you get of great value? So it's interesting that Ramana Mahashi is saying virtually the same thing that Paul Lowe was saying. You see, and I think, I think any any um, any person who goes on this inner journey and has a sincere wish to come to their own love, their own peace, their own essence, inevitably um, perseverance is very very important. And so I think for you, right now, this is your moment to persevere and also to be uh, aware that you're not always open to the people around you here in the community as you could be. And when you, if you like, are more open to the other people around you, you'll discover that everybody wants to help you, everybody wants to support you and you can discover that everybody loves you. Okay. <laughs> so I'm happy that you're coming to Spain and uh, yeah, I hope the combination of acupuncture and sunshine will be good for you. Yeah, thank you very much. I mm. think the swimming pool is also available now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If it's um, Kieran, if it, if it's not going to be hot enough, can you heat the water before we come? It's a rather nice um, extra we have in our house in Spain that we, the swimming pool has a heating system, and so we can, when it's not quite yet warm enough, we can heat it up a bit, and uh, that makes it possible to swim just on that moment where it's not yet quite hot enough. So. Uh, if we need to, Kieran, please heat it up in the days before we arrive. Okay. Have you been for a swim recently? <laughs> okay. Is it cold still, the water? It is. Okay. So before we come in two weeks, maybe anyway, it'll be warm enough. But if not, we'll heat it up. Okay. Okay, anybody else like to uh, dialogue with me about this uh, this subject? I mean, I can always volunteer somebody, but I a bit prefer you to volunteer yourselves. Otherwise, I'm going to have to ask Mahima if she likes to speak. <laughs> Okay, Nahima, say a few yeah. words and I'll have you on the screen. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know why I've chosen you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm, so you like me to say something about that, yeah? That would be the idea, yeah. I yeah. Mean, first of all, you were here last week in that in the house. What? How have you been going this week? How how are things this week? Yeah, last week was very intense in the house again, like always. Huh. And um, yeah, when I came came back home. Mm. Today is Tuesday, no, Thursday, and I had the feeling that the last days is that they they are more they were more calmer. So I felt more calmer and somehow clear. Clear. It was more clear inside. Fear. Clear. Clear, not fear. Yeah, no fear. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, yeah. It 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 felt. It was. I, I can. I have no word for it. So it seemed to me there is not a lot of person, personality. Oh, you're nothing. Last... You're nothing. Yes. <laughs> you're nothing. <laughs> Very good. I'm yeah. nothing. I just, <laughs> I'm nothing at all. Yeah, I can hide and do <laughs> non-duality. <laughs> no. <clears throat> yeah. 
but uh, today it was very strong for me. I meditate after I had a client and then um, I was lying down to, to meditate. I like it while lying down. And then my, my attention or my consciousness, my unconscious, I don't know what it was, went uh, back to India. Yeah. Yeah. And took me back to uh, Virupaksha cave. And this oh, was that's, a very... Hmm? That's a pretty good place to go back to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And this was very strong because I had... Um, there was a feeling of being there, being around the mountain, being in the cave as well. And it's still working very strong in my heart region right right so it, it felt like uh, this cave mm, yeah came into my heart and went down my chakras it yeah, felt it, like this so it was very strong feeling yeah some some many years ago now i guess it would be about 20 years ago i had come to Tiru uh, by first visiting Oroville. So this, this, this place, Oroville is a small modern city built mainly by uh, Western people, particularly French people um, near, the, near the sea. And it's developed over now many years. And um, they built a huge, what I call golden golf ball. So it's a vast sphere, which they coated on the outside with uh, panels with gold leaf on them. And uh, of course, it looks very beautiful, very dramatic. And many years ago, um, I went inside this golf ball one, one night because they offered a meditation. So inside there are two um, like staircases, but uh, I think if I remember, they're not actually stairs, they're ramps. So you can, there's slopes where you can walk up very easily. So you walk up and you come to a room and uh, it's a simple circular room and uh, they have a, a shaft of light that comes down from the roof onto a very large crystal. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of focus of this room, yeah? And I sat there for some some time, I can't remember. And of course, it was kind of exciting, uh, very modern. And in those days, maybe I wasn't such a such a great meditator. So I, you know, was kind of enjoying the the ambiance or something like this. Maybe I wasn't so inside, I was also rather touched by the outside. And then a bit later, I came to Tiru, and then I went up the, the mountain to the cave that you're talking about. And of course, inside that cave, it's very sort of primitive, you could say. Um, in the inner chamber, there is a kind of heap uh, of something. Actually, it's reputed to be the, the um, uh, how can I say, the the... Well, the story is that there was a, a spiritual master living in that um, cave. And the, the story is that he was able to self-combust himself. What this is the meaning of that? self -combust. It means that you, you, you have the ability to bring so much energy inside you that mm -hmm. you can burn your own body. So it's like a, a mm -hmm. way to, to leave this planet. And this this man is reputed to have done that. And his ashes are in the inner inner part of the cave. And maybe you notice that kind of uh, a heap is his ashes, meant to be his ashes. I don't know the truth of the story, but it could be easily a true story. So what is he, a heap? Heap? Heap, a pile, a pile of ashes, you know. Oh yeah, okay. Maybe you remember now that in the inner inner room there is this. Kind of heap, a, a pile of something. 
yeah this... yeah i co couldn't really remember what it was but today i had this uh quite strong energetic feeling about it yeah but i can't i can't re i couldn't remember what it was when i was in there i can remember that i was sit um, a little bit on this upper level they built around yeah but yeah. it's it's always dark in it so I couldn't really see what it is like, and I tried to to Google today after this um, kind of whatever, right. and um, ask myself what it is. Yeah, thank you. So this yeah. is now. So <laughs> you come to that cave. You can sit outside. There's a famous photograph of Ramana Maharshi when he was young, sitting outside that cave, and you can sit exactly in the spot where he was he was sitting. And then when you go in, you can you can be aware of the bed which he is reputed to have made. So there's a kind of concrete or stone bed where he, I guess, would sleep. Mm -hmm. And then when you go into the inner part of the cave, um, you can sit at a higher level. There's a yes. kind of higher level. And on that higher level on the right side, there is a kind of unclear heap. And that is what's reputed to be the ashes of this man who self-combusted himself. Okay, interesting. <laughs> yeah. it's kind of beyond beyond possibility for us Western people, but this is also a, a known uh, phenomena from Tibetans. Tibetans also some some of them have been. Uh, reputed to have been able to self-combust you know so then you end up with a pile of ashes anyway so um it's a very strong place so after my visit to Oroville to this kind of super duper modern uh huge golf ball and coming to this beautiful room with a crystal I was sitting in this cave you know and I noticed that I was having a much stronger experience in that cave that rather primitive cave that i had in this rather super duper modern meditation room uh, which probably cost a lot of effort and a lot of money to create and this cave on that mountain i would say is one of the most uh, beautiful places you can sit and meditate and uh, in in years past when i was spending more time in meditation in fact, my first visit to, to the ashram, I stayed one month um, about 20 years ago. And I would I would walk up the hill every day to that cave. I would sit every day in that cave for one month. Well, not every day, of course, but most days. And uh, this was always very, very beautiful. And I got to know the man who was the caretaker of the cave. He was a Mexican guy who'd been living uh, in the ashram for quite a few years, very quiet guy, he didn't talk very much, but gradually we became quite good friends. And he was saying to me one, one evening as we walked down together, he was saying to me, from his observation, most people can't stay inside that room for longer than 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. So this is this is a super powerful place, I would say. So I mean, the fact that you had this experience today um, is is somehow uh, showing you that you know you're very much cared by that mountain and by Ramana Maharshi. And this isn't the first time you've had kind of Ramana Maharshi moments. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to share your biggest moment? <laughs> <laughs> you may have noticed that tonight we have uh, two or three people from India. Uh, yeah. We have Stella, we have Renato, and um, uh, Aditi is here. Where to start? You mean my bed story? Yeah, you were lying in bed <laughs> with your boyfriend. He went to the toilet and you... Yes. Yeah, I had a meeting, obviously. Uh, I was lying in bed and um, there was a lot of light in the room. 
and it seemed to me that I'm in a I was awake actually and I was thinking what's going on here there's so much light and I was just watching it observing it and then um, it was kind of got a it, it got a shape and this shape was Ramana Maharshi and I was really surprised about that because I couldn't really believe what what is happening in this moment and um, yeah my boyfriend he woke up and he yeah he, he went to toilet and I asked him can you see anything of this phenomena what's going on here and he said no so when he came back I asked again and he couldn't see anything about that he went to sleep again and um, it was going on for about maybe 20 minutes i can can't really remember about that right yeah right. and and he's and i remember that um this vision said to me um come to arunachala right. yeah, yeah this was very strong right. and um i had a experience some weeks ago in mm, the living room I was sitting there and then it felt to me like something took over my body and then I knew this is the presence of Ramana and I was sitting in silence for about and, and I couldn't do anything I was just no moving in my hands, no moving in my body at all, almost no breathing at all, like for four hours. For four hours? Four hours. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And my boyfriend, he was there as well. <laughs> he could, uh, yeah, he, he took part in this energy, kind of energy. By the way, he is uh, reading the book Aham Spurana. Right. No, it's the second time he's reading it. <laughs> Second time he's reading it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And um, then he was tired somehow and he went to bed and I was still there until 12 o'clock in the evening in the night. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Very, very strong. I couldn't move at all. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So this was just recently. So the phenomena are very intense. Yeah, you often say it, things are very intense, but I think this is, this is somehow you, your nature, actually, you know, you, mm -hmm. you welcome intensity. Yeah. And, um, you know, we had our couple of sharings last week, and I was also encouraging you to, um, how can I say it? Well, you know, I don't know what I was encouraging you, actually, but I was somehow encouraging you because you're exactly one of these people who has this enormous uh, possibility, you know, you, you absolutely have this possibility. And I was uh, encouraging you to do the necessary inner work, you know, because you can say I'm nothing, you can sit, you know, in, in this nothing, it's fairly easy for you to sit in the nothing. But there is, from my sense, there is some fear. You have some fear which you may not be so connected to. And that needs to be looked at. You know, you have to welcome it, you know, even mm. though it's not going to be maybe so comfortable. I don't know what it is, and probably you don't know what it is. So it's just one of those things you can't really avoid if you want to uh, come to your, your essence. This is probably the biggest fear. What's that? To come to the essence is probably the biggest fear. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I've, I've had the situation with several people, including my, I had an Australian wife before. Um, she was the, she was the organizer of the community in the, in the early days. She lived in, in the community for two years and then. She, uh, she told me, I've had enough of you, John David. I've had enough of the community. I'm going back to Australia because she had two grown-up children who were around 20 at the time. 
She wanted to have more contact with her kids, who are now both married and got children. So she's enjoying being a grandmother. You know, so this was a strong pull. And uh, anyway, so but she she I remember one one time I think it was actually in India. She woke up in the morning telling me that um, some, something was happening with her heart. And um, so anyway, we I think we arranged uh, for her to visit the hospital and they confirmed that nothing is nothing is wrong. But um, this was this was when she was also very close. And I think this was also fear based. This feeling of something is not OK in my heart. It was somehow like an enormous fear. In fact, I, I at the time I, I used a different word. It was like terror, you know, like terror. And I think this terror is not unnatural when you come close to this self-realization. Because, you know, whatever has been happening in the spiritual journey, when you come close to your essence, then um, there's no turning back anymore. You can't really stop it. You can't really give up. You know, it's like um, it's taking you. It's like an enormous welcome, something like an enormous welcome. And, and so that can be very um, terrifying, I think, because you can begin to feel the possibility of, um, of being completely taken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, this anyway. is the fear of uh, losing control. Yeah. 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 Okay, very Thank nice. Uh, let me see, back to the gallery. Okay, so I've got one more chapter. Um, this one is called Love and Relationship. And this is, I have a quotation from Deepak Chopra. Uh, I hope you know Deepak Chopra. If you have this book, you could uh, look up about Deepak Chopra because um, he's still alive. He's now, I think, in his 80s. He la lives in San Diego in the south of California, southern part of California. And I haven't had so much personal contact with him, but I have an enormous respect uh, he's a medical doctor, Indian, an Indian man, a medical doctor, who became very close to the Maharishi. And in fact, the Maharishi wanted him, well, actually, he expected Deepak Chopra, who would take over uh, this big organization, which the Maharishi created in his lifetime. And he was looking for... Well, he was just expecting that Deepak Chopra would take over this big organization, but actually he didn't. He, for whatever reason, I don't remember, he left the Maharishi and went back to California. And the Maharishi had such a strong feeling about him taking over that he would call him by telephone. Please come back. You know, everything is waiting for you. But he never did that. He went his own way. And I would say he's probably the most interesting, uh, well, I don't know, the most interesting, one of, one of the most interesting um, teachers. And um, he ha if, you, if you feel interested in him, you can, um, you can join a mailing list. He sends out fairly regular mailings, always rather interesting. And you can also find him on X, this Elon Musk uh, Twitter Twitter page. He reg regularly posts on Twitter. And I, lo I love very much this quotation. It touches, always touches me when I read this quotation from him. Love is our being. Being is existence. So love is existence. Your essential state is love. What distorts that is that we look outside for love, not realizing that the love we experience outside is a reflection of the love we have for our deepest self. 
when I say deepest self, I don't mean your ego, which is not yourself. The ego is a socially induced hallucination. I mean your soul, which is beyond your self-image. It is your true self. Your true self is love. So this is always to me very, very touching. And this is something I've been trying over many years in our community to become the reality of our community. That people realize that falling in love is very much of a second kind of possibility. And the, the number one, the gold medal, is to come to your own, your very own self and realize that this this is the love. This is the true love. And I love this comment he has about the ego is a socially induced hallucination. Socially induced hallucination. I hope uh, Lisa hears that well. She's still a bit caught up in the socially induced hallucination. So... Um, My comment was that the ego, I can describe the ego as a kind of movie. And we are busy producing it, starring in it, and watching it. It comes from our conditioning as we grow up. And so I love his words, socially induced hallucination. I think you can't, you can't get the ego better than that. That's really great. Love is our being, being is existence, and so love is existence. And this means that everything is love, you see. This means everything is love. And you have to avoid, maybe not when you're younger, maybe not, not until you've had some experience of relationship, but when you really want to come to your own essence, then you have to be very clear that it's an enormous sabotage to go in a I love you kind of situation. I love you. See, this is immediately duality, duality. You won't come to your essence if you stay in this kind of duality, you see. We recently had some new young residents in our community and they probably yet to be completely clear about this. But it's very difficult because in the society, there is always this pressure in the society that love is always to be found outside. I live, I live in a, a situation where we have some big, two big uh, autobahns that pass near our village. Uh, connecting Dusseldorf and uh, Cologne, two big cities. And on Friday night and Saturday night, these motorways are packed with cars rushing here or there. And probably they're all looking for love, you see. So unfortunately, this is, this is what the society offers. Get in your car, go to a party, meet somebody and fall in love. This is it. This is this is a deep conditioning that we got already in our family, even if our parents didn't say anything at all. And of course, most in most families, if you're a girl, your mother is giving you some advice about getting married and being in love your whole life and so on and so on. And if you're a, a, the son, then you probably get similar kind of advice. So this this is, this is for everybody very difficult to set on the side, to put on the side. So an enormous sabotage if you're interested in true spiritual inner work, you see. And uh, I remember I was with Osho for some years and later I was with Papaji for some years. And both of them were not interested in talking about relationships. They were talking, they wanted to talk about God. They wanted to talk about the possibility of coming to God. And, and yet, in the end, both of them 
succumb to the wishes of their Western disciples who wanted only to talk about relationships, you see. So this was in both cases. I can remember, vividly remember when, when Osho kind of opened up the whole situation in, the, in his ashram and he was encouraging people to play out this uh, I, I love you game. And so there was an explosion in the ashram of uh, relationships for some time, for some time. When I first came to Papaji, the letters that people wrote you, to talk to Papaji, you would write him a letter. He'd have a pile of letters on his table next to him, and he'd take the letters one by one. And when I first came to him in 1992, I think it was, um, the letters about relationship, he always put them on the side. He would never read them. He would never answer them. But by the time I left, nearly five years later, he was always picking up those letters. <laughs> anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's probably enough. Um, anybody else like to share? Maybe one of our younger, uh, one of the younger ones would like to say something about falling in love or rising in love. Who shall I choose? If you're not going to choose yourself. Let's have a man. How about Nataraj? You're pretty young. Are you familiar with this conversation Hello. about love? Um, yes, I'm familiar with both both types of love. Okay. Um, Which one has got you the strongest, you think? My own love. I, for me, my um, the projected love kind of gets created out of my own love. When I'm, I'm just with people and I'm in love, then it's not necessarily because of the other person, but the mind creates a story out of that moment of being in my own love. And then sometimes when I get caught up in the story and I give it energy, more thoughts, then like a kind of falling in personal love can happen for some time, a kind of side story. But yeah, it's, it's all my own love where it comes from. Right, right. Well, this is this is very good progress because um, probably a year ago, you were more in this personal love, I think, yeah? or maybe I, I, I that was the impression I got. Maybe it wasn't true. I don't know. Was it true? It's okay. You can admit it. You know, we, we're not going to punish you. Don't we? we, we at the moment, our punishment cellar is uh, closed, you know. We haven't opened it for some time. <laughs> uh, honestly, I don't I don't know. I mean, probably it was more unconscious back then. But right now, I don't remember so well what, what was inside of me one year ago. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, well, that, that's that's a good progress I and mean, i think one year ago you were quite quite uh, fascinated by the possibility of personal kind of love stories Maybe i mean so. i mean I, there was just more curiosity i mean there's still curiosity even curiosity towards relationships i mean for me it's not my priority but i i never had a real relationship in my life so that's just curiosity right right yeah, well, I, I can understand this because uh, I think you're still about 26, aren't you? 25, uh, yeah, 25. 25, yeah. yeah. So it's it's natural because uh, the conditioning we get as we go up is uh, very strong. Yeah, very strong. And one, one of the things I can <clears throat> thank Osho for, 
I mean, I would say my biggest thanks to him is teaching me to meditate and teaching me to become uh, aware of what's going on inside me, which comes out of meditation. So these are, are the two big lessons I got from being with him for many years, actually. And uh, <clears throat> I'd always been, before I came there, I came there when I was about 31, I think. So in, in the years before, um, I can say that, yes, I had some girlfriends, but I was a bit shy and, um, yeah, I think I may have had one or two relationships, but but uh, it was something in a way that I, I didn't really understand. And so when he opened things up in the ashram and started to encourage us to experiment with relationships, this was... Uh, pretty amazing because over the years I then uh, was very busy with relationships and uh, out of that uh, I was able to come to the point where I saw that wasn't at all what I wanted I mean not that I didn't want but that wasn't my priority anymore and that allowed me to go much deeper and it's allowed me that when he had left his body, I moved to another teacher, Papaji. And when I came to Papaji, that, um, well, I actually came there with a lady. I came to Papaji with a Russian lady who had been together. We'd been together for, I don't know, three years maybe. And, um, but we were both um, very hotly interested in the true luck you know not not just our relationship so if you're going to do a relationship I, I would strongly advise that it's much much better to do that with somebody who has the same interest so if you have the interest in coming to your essence then if you're both wanting to come to your essence you can't be so easily caught up in I love you anymore so um we both we both came to Papaji together. Uh, I was quite a lot older than her, and um, I met her in Russia. I I spent six months traveling in Russia as a kind of mini mini guru, um, and um, yeah. So anyway, we did a strong journey together. And we both got this enormous benefit of being with Papaji. Um, and, um, well, late, later she left. I don't really know what happened in her life. She has disappeared to Canada. But um, since now many, many years, I, I would say I'm, I'm living alone. And sometimes I'm uh, relating, but the essence has always been since I would say now about 20 or 30 years, even with the lady I had two little daughters from, um, it was never this I love you story. So I'm very happy about that. Yeah. Okay, so Nataraj, that's uh, good. So we have some more time if anybody else likes to to share. Very happy to see Stella with us tonight. And, and also her close friend Renalta. I think you're here in the house, Renalta, is that right? I haven't met you yet, but we'll probably meet tomorrow. And uh, who else is here? Yasmin is here, but I'm not. Do I know you, Yasmin? Have we met before? Um, I visited uh, online satsang of, uh, quite a while ago, once I believe with you, and um, yeah, I am just joining uh, out of love or curiosity, or I have a little bit more space right now in my life. I was very busy, and um, yeah, um, I, I was a sannyasa kid. I became sannyasin when I was six years old. Six years old. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty. I'm 46 now, so 40 years. And um, yeah, on my journey, and um, can relate very much to you as a teacher. And I just wanted to 
yeah, just be in presence or be with you as um, somebody who transfers consciousness and just ba bathe in that energy tonight. So <laughs> to tell you the truth. And um, I'm, I'm kind of, as I have a little bit more space in my life, I was doing some trainings and working very much the last years. I am uh, at the moment, I'm interested to get in contact a little bit more with uh, consciousness work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm doing it on my own anyway, um, as good as I can, but um, it's not so easy always just on my own. Right. Where do you live in, in uh, your German? I, I live in Germany in the Black Forest in the mountains, okay. near Freiburg, that is. Right, right. Yeah, we were, we our community started nearby. Oh, and nice. Two years we were in the Black Forest you know, in the beginning. Yeah. So tell me something. What, what what was it? I mean, maybe you don't remember so clearly, but what was it like being a, a young kid? Uh, did you did you spend time living in the ashram in in Pune? No, I was actually in Germany. Um, I was very much in contact in Munich with the center there. And um, I was always a kid running around in the in the Munich center and uh, running around in the in the white robes at evenings. And we had like living in different community houses. My dad also had one community house himself in Munich. But he left to Australia and we left to Australia when I was about eight. I, I really wanted to go to the ashram to India, but um, and he also uh, gave a lot of money for the Kurs One school. I was supposed to go to Kurs One, but then we moved to Australia. You went to this school when you were like six or seven? No, I didn't. Then we only planned that out. You, I was in, I was you in planned Germany. to go to that school, but you didn't go. No, we went to we moved out to Australia then because it, at that point it was kind of said in the community or my dad picked that up that Australia is a good place to go and to live, right. and so um, he, uh, yeah, he managed that we could um, uh, move to Australia as a family. Right, right, yeah, yeah. I also lived uh, in in uh, Australia for five years after I'd been with Papaji. And of course, in Australia, one of the great things is that they have wonderful nature and they have these strange animals which come out at night. Yeah. Yeah. Very so, loud animals uh, in comparison to Germany. They are just much bigger and louder, you know. <laughs> right. And they have these beautiful beaches where you can walk for, for hours. Don't you, you don't meet anybody. Yeah. I enjoy this nature very much, but in the end, um, I uh, I felt the pull of European culture actually, and decided to. Well, I didn't really decide. I got a message to come back to Europe actually. Mm -hmm. and so, yeah, that that happened about. Uh, I think I was five years in in living in Australia, and I met a, a woman, and we got married, and we came to Europe, and. Um, yeah, I've been here in Germany ever since. Yeah. I mean, if you if you're having a space and you 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 feel some connection, you might consider coming to Spain in two weeks' time. We have a ten day retreat in our beautiful house in Spain, and I mean, I don't know how much time you've actually got, but uh, that might be rather touching for you. Yeah, yeah. I will uh, let that sink in and. Yeah. See if I can make it possible. Right, right. Okay, well, nice to talk to you. Yeah, yeah. nice to be with you all tonight. Yeah, and you can, you haven't been to our house, I think. Yeah? No, I haven't. Right, right. Okay, well, you might think about that too. We have rather yeah. <laughs> nice place, so you might be amazed. It reminds you of the good old, the good old days when you were... Um, running around the center in Munich. Yeah. Mm. Thanks. Okay, so um, I think that's uh, that's it. So very nice to meet you all and happy to meet the guys from India again. 
Um, and um, yeah, I say good night. Mm -hmm.